Hello, I'm Stephen McDonnell on the Chinese-North Korean border. Siberian tigers once roamed here in their thousands, but as the forest disappeared, so did they. An estimated 12 wild tigers remain in China's northeast, and small tiger numbers, including those in captivity, expose the species to genetic deficiencies. Now a group of Chinese scientists is trying to do something about it. The remote mountain forests of China, Russia and North Korea are home to the Siberian tiger. It's a world of deep snow and bitter cold, with temperatures dropping to minus 30 degrees. Despite the isolation, the tiger's natural home is fast disappearing. China's northern forests are being cut down, to feed the country's enormous hunger for raw materials. In the wild, each tiger ranges across its own territory, usually more than 50 square kilometers, sometimes double that size. These days, there's simply not enough forest to sustain many tigers. They are, however, thriving in captivity. Chief zoologist Liu Dan is keen to show us around the tiger park in the northeastern city of Harbin. He's China's foremost Siberian tiger expert. Captive breeding has been quite successful. Harbin's Tiger Park has more than 400 Siberian tigers. A sister park has more than 300. In all of China, there are around 2,000 in captivity. That may seem like a healthy population, but for an endangered species, it really is a small gene pool. Already the scientists have seen genetic deficiencies being passed on. In response, they've decided to set up a Siberian tiger gene bank. This will provide an extensive database on the DNA of the species. It will also allow them to stop inbreeding. The process involves drugging every tiger. Two blow darts are used to make absolutely sure that the tiger is knocked out. The drug needs 20 minutes to take effect. Once the tiger is sedated, zoo staff collect DNA from hair and blood. The samples are analysed at the local university. If we don't apply genetic management carefully, we'll lose the genetic diversity. So what the purpose of 
this experiment project is to uh, uh, re-establish the pedigree, and then we will make a management plan. Scientists are using stored DNA to map the park's entire population. Their findings could mean bad news for tigers found to be less worthy of preservation. A lot of tigers are not genetically significant for the conservation. So, from my point of view, I just want to isolate the tigers. The rejects will not be allowed to mate. Ironically, the park's success in breeding is also creating new problems. Chesha 这 seems like good tucker for lazy tigers, but it's hardly what they would have to catch and eat in the wild. Enter the tourists with their cash to spend. At Harbin's Tiger Park, Visitors can buy live animals for the tigers. Chickens are the cheapest, but you can also buy a sheep or an ox if you have the money. Clearly this is done for the tourists' photographic enjoyment, but there is another way of looking at it. Zhengong的饲养繁育条件下 Giving the tigers live animals is part of a much more ambitious project. There's a long-term goal of releasing tigers back into the wild. Chungbai Mountain in neighbouring Jilin province, Liu Dan and his colleagues run a small park with only 15 specially selected tigers. The trees are tall, the snow is thick, and the tigers seem to love it. They're still behind a big fence, but life is much closer to that inside a high mountain forest. Now, this 我们放回到亚长白山去，主要是让它在老虎生存的故乡去体验这种自然环境。对于野外的这种生境的这种锻炼，实际来讲呢，是对老虎也是一个放归，使它更放归的一个前提前提条件。
The small group of tigers moved to Chiang Mai Mountain eight months ago are slowly adapting. Even so, having spent their whole lives in captivity, they need to be fitter. Otherwise, they won't survive in the wild. The staff are also checking how well the tigers mark their territory, scratching trees and spraying their urine. The scientists are not really sure how they'll know when their tigers are ready for release into the wild. Living at Mount Changbai, the tigers are acclimatizing to much harsher weather conditions. If they make it to the wild, they'll also be assisted by an unlikely diplomatic decision. Across the frozen lake behind me is North Korea. People may not be able to freely cross the border, but tigers can. That's because the Chinese and North Korean governments allow an open border for animals inside a reserve that people can't enter. In this way, the tigers' already shrinking environment isn't even further reduced by national boundaries. Quote while Liu Dan is preparing his tigers for the wild, you get the feeling he won't easily let them go. Not if there's any doubt they'll survive. The next stage will be to select an even smaller group of tigers for advanced training. This will need a huge area of tens of square kilometers. Then, if they can survive the cold, catch their own food, and cope with periods of hunger, they might be well on their way. <laughs> These tigers are clearly not ready. They're still not spending the coldest nights out in the open. And they'd be no match in a territorial dispute with a wild cousin. But for a species which only 10 years ago was heading for extinction, the future does seem brighter.